Hey folks, I'm Andre, also known as Maidla. Hey everyone, I'm Pew, aka Pew Pew Lasers. Today is May 28th, and we've just returned to LA from China for MSI. Before we start, we wanted to give a big congratulations to Gen G for securing the win and another world slot for the LCK. Now today, in addition to the usual game discussion, we've also got some updates about esports, a new executive producer for League, and a bit about Arcane Season 2, which is coming at the end of this year. Let's start though with what's going on in the game. First, we want to give a little update on Champions. Well, mainly that there isn't a big update. It's around the time of year when we usually publish a Champion Roadmap, but because we shared a lot during Season Start, we won't be doing Champion Roadmaps this year. That said, they're not going away, but we're going to reevaluate how we do them, and probably fold them into dev updates in the future. We do want to talk a little bit about Malphite though, who some of you may have seen rocking updated visuals in some of videos earlier this year. Malphite's visual update is an experimental approach on our end, League's got a really large roster of champions, and we felt that the gradual way we did Jax's update landed really well. So we want to keep experimenting with this method of development. What we're testing first with Malphite is how efficiently we can take some of the updated visuals from Wild Rift and redo them so that they work in League of Legends. The skins catalog between the two games aren't exactly the same, so there's always going to be some work that needs to be done from the scratch regardless. But we do hope that this is going to prove to be in a way that we can accelerate visual improvements into League. Now, we don't have a timeline on when, or even if Malphite's new visuals will come to League. But if this is something that works out well, we're going to look to do this with additional champions in the future too. Separately, we'd also like to talk about Spirit of Hearth Home for a moment. This minigame has been live in the client for a bit now, and we'd really love your feedback on it. This is just one of the new ways we're exploring to give more immersive connections into the world and characters of Runeterra. We'll be taking the learnings from your feedback and incorporating this into our future plans for similar things that we're really excited about for the rest of this year and going into the next. Now though, let's talk a bit about game modes. Arena's most recent run has been pretty successful so far. As a filming, players are sticking with this version of Arena pretty consistently post-launch, with more sustained play than previous versions. We do still want to see how interest does or doesn't hold up over a longer period of time, but it's been a really promising run so far. We're seeing a lot of discussion around some particular aspects of it. Things like the cameos, the lily pad map, prismatic items, pick ban, and the move to 16 players instead of 8. We're going to share some more in-depth thoughts on all of those, and more, in a future dev blog. And of course, we'll continue to make adjustments to Arena, you know, both the content and the systems, throughout its run. We're also getting really close to releasing our upcoming PvE mode. It's called Swarm, and it can be played co-op or solo. It'll come live in mid-July as part of the summer event, so you should be seeing it on PvE in late June. This mode is a pretty big departure from League's core gameplay, so maybe I'll actually be kind of good at it. The team really wanted to emulate the chill, more casual style of Bullet Heaven Survivor games, with some resulting reimagining of how our champions would play in this context. We recently launched an update to the Champion Mastery system. We feel like some of the update has landed well, like uncapping mastery and the ability to unlock champion titles, but other parts have missed the mark for some players. One of the biggest areas of feedback was the visual overhaul. Many of you felt that the new visuals didn't match League's aesthetic. So, we've been working on a revised visual design, shown here, that integrates some aspects of the previous design into the new one. We're also going to be bringing back the removed challenges that were based off a number of Mastery 7 champions achieved. And we've seen a lot of requests to be able to progress champion mastery in more game modes. On this one, we don't have an exact solution figured out yet, but we agree it's a problem, and we're working on it. Now let's talk about what Vanguard's doing. Since we launched Vanguard four weeks ago, we've banned over 47,000 scripters, 2,500 of which we caught in Diamond Plus level games. Vanguard has given us a lot of leverage in detection and prevention here that we just didn't have before. Vanguard has also given us anti-virtual machine techniques that have almost eliminated botting overnight, resulting in bot hours in League falling from 1 million plus a day to under 50k hours a day. Now that'll be most noticeable in the co-op versus AI queues, but probably also felt in lower ranks PvP as well. And that should also mean fewer games ruined by bots and fewer players using purchased Smurf accounts that were leveled by bots. So far since launch, we've seen no real discernible change in daily player numbers for League. While we've removed a meaningful number of bot accounts from play, actual human engagement is actually up a bit over the past month. Now, we still know that this was a big change for League, so we're planning to continue giving you updates from the anti-cheat team on Vanguard and all things cheating related over time. We'll also have the anti-cheat team in the next dev update for a deeper dive. All right, that's it for us. We'll pass things over to Chris and John to share some updates about League Esports. Hey everyone, I'm John Needham, President of Esports at Riot Games. And I'm Chris Greeley, the Head of Strategy for LOL Esports. Hey Chris, an amazing time in Chengdu at MSI. Yeah, the tournament was great this year. I mean, Andre and Pooh stole our thunder, 
But what they failed to mention is that this year's MSI broke every viewership record we have ever had for MSI. We took a lot of feedback from the community last year and our format changes this year were really well received. So I wanna say thank you to all of our pros who made the trip to China to compete and to everyone who tuned in to watch for this MSI. Yeah, it was amazing. Earlier this year, I shared an update to our team partnership model for the LCK, LCS, and LEC, and how we're changing the way our revenue model works with a focus on sharing digital revenues with the teams that compete in our tier one leagues. Today, we wanted to share the next phase of our plans, a unified split structure for all of our leagues, the addition of a third international event to our calendar, and proposed changes to our leagues in the APAC and Americas regions. We believe these changes are necessary to strengthen our path toward the long-term sustainability of our sport. Overall, we're proposing to reduce the number of teams in our Tier 1 ecosystem. We're doing this to strengthen team participation in the new global revenue pool, basically with fewer teams to share revenues with, all the teams will get an increase in their revenue per team. This should also concentrate player talent into our best teams and improve the overall fan experience by making it easier to follow our sport and hopefully create more high quality matches. After these changes, League of Legends Esports could look similar to Valorant Esports or the BCT. We have taken a lot of lessons from the BCT, a model we are super happy with and that's proven to be very successful in its first two years. So starting in 2025, we're proposing that Southeast Asia, Hong Kong, Taiwan, Macau, Japan, Vietnam, and Oceania combine forces into a single multi-region league. This means that the top teams and top talent in these regions will be competing against each other in more competitive games with fresh new rivalries. In addition, we'd also like the LCS, CBLOL, and LLA to come together as an Americas League. The LCS and CBLOL would compete in the North and South Americas conferences respectively, with those current leagues retaining six of their current teams, plus a team each from the LLA. The final slot in each conference would be reserved for promotion and relegation from the Tier 2 system in each conference. We believe this provides a clear path to pro and expands players' opportunities to compete at the Tier 1 level. After these changes, there would be five leagues in our Tier 1 ecosystem, the Americas, APAC, the LEC, LCK, and LPL. There are more details on these changes in our lolesports.com article. Speaking of international tournaments, we are adding a third event to the 2025 calendar that starts with regional play at the start of the year. Each of the now five regional leagues would have a single team qualify for the international event as part of this new tournament in March. We'll get to watch the best team from each region play against every other region in a round robin format before crowning a champion through a bracket stage. Yeah, it's gonna be super exciting. We're gonna use this tournament as a way to experiment with different competitive formats. For 2025, we'll be using a version of fearless draft mode in the regional and international portions of the competition. Fearless is gonna be so cool. Yeah. Very excited awesome. about that. Finally, with the addition of this new international tournament, we're using this as an opportunity to refine regional split structures. Going forward, each region will open the year with the new tournament or tournament split, and then continue on to two slightly shorter splits throughout the year, which will end with MSI and a regional championship respectively. Champions from each region will be crowned at this regional league championship rather than at the end of each split. And of course, the season will culminate as always with Worlds. Now, before we talk arcane in a moment, I'd like to introduce somebody. He's a special guest today, but he's going to be a recurring presence on the dev updates going forwards. This is Paul Beleza, and he's our new executive producer for League of Legends. Thank you, Andre. Hi, everybody. My name is Paul Beleza, and you may remember me from such league moments as the Wukong Champion Overview, Candy King Ivern, the April Fool's Irritational Show Matches, and the Bilgewater Burning Tides event where we killed Gangplank. I'm so sorry about that, Lull Esports, except I'm not. Uh, I have been at Riot since forever and was one of the first 10 developers on League of Legends. I spent the next decade working on everything from champions with Meddler here, in-game events, skins, and even the store. After a few years working on Valorant, I became a wandering game production wizard for League Studio, helping out on all things arcane, and most recently embedding deeply with the Wild Rift team. And now, I'm thrilled to be returning to work on League of Legends as its executive producer. 
I'm deeply honored and ecstatic to be coming home to the game I know and love in order to help make amazing experiences for you all. I am at your service. So for now, I'll be busy catching up on all things League. I'll see you next time, summoners. Wait, we've changed that? We've changed that? Uh, see you next time, players. Thank you, Paul. Very excited to have you in this role. Now though, we're gonna hand over to Christian to talk a bit about Arcane. Hey there, I'm Christian Link, one of the creators of Arcane. I'm here to talk about, you guessed it, Arcane. Arcane is just the beginning of our larger storytelling journey and our partnership with the wonderful animation studio that is Fortiche. From the very beginning, since we started working on this project, we had a very specific ending in mind, which means the story of Arcane wraps up with this second season. But Arcane is just the first of many stories we want to tell in Runeterra. We've been with Riot through Vi and Jinx's entire journey thus far, from becoming in-game champions, to characters featured in different cinematics, to main characters in a TV show. Their arcs have grown so far beyond our original dreams, and we want to give the same treatment to more champions. We're currently working on our next projects across television and film, and we're hopeful that we can share more by the end of the year. We're still in the early stages of that, and these things do take a lot of time, but we want to share updates with you whenever we can. Until then, let's get ready for Arcane Season 2 with our first teaser. Enjoy. Your council is dead. You walk along the edge of danger. Wrath must be met with wrath. You will have justice. Lead a strike team into zone with three objectives. Locate Jinx. Dismantle Shimmer. And neutralize any agents still loyal to Silco. My sister is gone. Finally got the name right. Sister. 